Hello and welcome to Craftiosity, the subscription box of modern craft kits. I'm Moira Fuller and this month is all about shibori, the Japanese dyeing form. Now we're doing a tabletop tutorial so don't worry if you don't have outdoor space, we're not using big vats of dye, this is something you can do quite easily at home. Enjoy! Okay, so let's have a little look inside this month's kit. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you the supplies in here to do a run through with some test fabric and also to dye a tote bag separately. So here is your dye and then we have some soda ash. We use this to prepare the fabric before we dye it. And then you've got a sponge brush and some bits and pieces with which to bind the fabric. So there's elastic bands, there's some lollipop sticks and some twine and some rubber gloves to keep your hands safe. So here's your tote bag. Here we have some pieces of 100% cotton fabric and that's to let you test. Your soda ash and your dye and there's two packets inside that sachet. And then as I say you've got your lollipop sticks, your twine, your rubber bands and your brush. And if you've got one of our kits you'll also find a dust mask in there just to protect yourself when you're working with a soda ash and dye. First of all use some cling film to prepare your table. Then make sure your sink is nice and clean and pour in 2,250 millilitres of water. Add in one of the packets of soda ash and with your gloves on mix it in so that the soda ash dissolves. Add in your pieces of fabric and then you're going to give those a good soak and then leave them for half an hour. This prepares your fabric ready for the dye. Once they've been soaked for half an hour just squeeze out the excess water of all the pieces of fabric and bring them over to your table. And give your sink a good clean out once you're finished. Keep your gloves on while you're working with the fabric and then the dyeing just to protect your hands. So we're going to try different binding techniques on each of these pieces of fabric. With this first one, flatten it out and then fold it in half and then fold it over again and fold it once more. Then with your lollipop sticks, place one behind the fabric near the top and then another one in front. Use one of the elastic bands to then bind the two lollipop sticks together. And do this on both sides. You're going to repeat this again twice more, one in the middle and one at the end. And the idea with this is that wherever the lollipop sticks are bound tightly to the fabric, when you dye it, those patches will remain white. Now with your second piece of fabric, roll it up into a tube. Then we're going to use some of the string to bind it tightly all the way along. So I've just tied a knot in one end and then I'm binding it quite tightly. Again, anywhere that the string is biting into the fabric will be areas where it doesn't dye. So just knotting it off at the other side. And then for the third piece of test fabric, Pinch a little area of the fabric and then use an elastic band to bind around it just to create a little pucker where there's a little bit of fabric showing through. Then repeat this across the fabric so you've got an array of these little puckers creating a pattern right across it. There you go. Okay, now we're going to create the dye so use an old jam jar or something similar to mix it in and fill the jam jar with 100 millilitres of water. Then carefully pour in the sachet of dye. Again, you just need one of the sachets for now. Now you'll see the dye kind of sits on top of the water and you don't want to breathe it in or blow it around anywhere. So just very carefully stir it in. Once you've got it all stirred in, we're going to start dyeing the pieces of fabric. So just in preparation for dyeing, tear off three more pieces of cling film and pop them to one side. Then use your sponge brush to apply the dye to the fabric and be careful again not to splash the dye anywhere but you really want to saturate the fabric with the dye. So get the sponge brush right into all of the gaps. Then place the piece into one of your pieces of cling film and you're going to wrap it right around so it's fully contained. And then put your wrapped piece of cling film just into a plastic bag. You're going to do this with all of your samples and then you're going to put the bag away overnight. So now I'm just dyeing the second tester. Again, nice and saturated and we're wrapping it up in a piece of cling film. And for the third piece, again, make sure you're getting right into all the gaps. There's a lot of wee nooks and crannies on this one. And also just make sure that you're dyeing all the areas on the back. 
and then wrap that one up. Place them all in your plastic bag, wrap it up and put it somewhere safe for 24 hours. Then you can tidy up your workspace. So after 24 hours you're going to give them a good wash out. So put your gloves back on and then take out the binding. Initially you're going to wash them out just in water and if you do it in warm water and give them a really good rinse, try and get all the dye out so that the water runs clear. You're going to do this with all your bindings. So once you've given them a really good wash out in warm water, then pop them into your washing machine. You want to run them on a cold cycle with no detergent. And just to make sure your machine's fine afterwards, run another empty cycle through just to make sure there's no dye left in the machine. Remember to give your sink a good clean out once you've used it too, just to make sure there's no dye left in that either. Let your samples dry naturally and then give them a good iron. So here's some of our iron samples. This is the one that had the wooden lollipop sticks. This was the one that was bound by string and you can see the marks from the string along here. And then this was our one using the elastic bands and I really like this pattern. You can see quite a lot of the texture where the fabric was captured between the bands. So this is the one I'm going to use on the tote bag. So now I've done exactly the same thing with the tote bag. So it has been in soda ash water for 30 minutes to prepare it. And here is my bag. Again, keep your gloves on for all of this. So I'm just giving it straight now and now I'm going to start pinching and I'm going to make sure I'm capturing the fabric on the back of the bag as well as on the front. So I'm just binding those as I did before. I'm spacing them out evenly across the bag and then down the length of it. And I also want to do something with a handle so I'm going to just pinch those together and pop some elastic bands around those. Again, just take out a piece of cling film to wrap it in up afterwards. Prepare your dye as you did before using the other dye sachet and then apply it to the bag. And again, I'm going for a really saturated application of the dye. And also making sure it's fully on the back of the bag as well. As before, you're going to fold it up, wrap it up in your cling film and then pop it into a plastic bag and leave it for 24 hours. After 24 hours, unwrap your cling film and take off the binding. There you go, and now you can have a little look and see what your bag is starting to look like. And then give it a really good wash through again so that all of the dye runs clear. Run it through your machine, let it dry naturally and then give it an iron and this is what your bag could look like. So you can see the detail on the handles that the dye is carried through both sides and there you go, your bag is ready to go. There you have it, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please share it, we're Craftiosity on social media and if you'd like to join us, head on over to craftiosity.co.uk to hear all about our next kit.